Hi, I'm Maria Langer, and I'm the one in the leather jacket in the pilot seat of my Robinson R44 Raven 2 helicopter, and I'm taking off from Wenatchee's uh, Pangborn Airport. Uh, my lips are moving there, but they don't match up with what I'm saying right now, and that's because the audio did not work properly on this recording. Um, my cameras are driving me insane, and hey, at least I got video on this. So I'm going to narrate this uh, after the fact. I'm sitting at my desk watching the video and I will tell you what's going on. And I only wish that my voice and what I'm saying now could match what my hand motions are gonna do, but, but that ain't gonna happen. So uh, bear with me and if you don't like the narration, just turn the volume off and then you won't have to hear me. So I've just taken off from Wenatchee Pangborn Airport. Uh, the reason I'm all bundled up in a leather jacket is because I've just done a flight with some clients to Moses Lake Airport and that was uh, an aerial photo flight and that required uh, the one of the doors to be off. So um, I'm, I'm all bundled up in my leather jacket and uh, even the doors are all back on now and I've decided to uh, make one last flight of the autumn uh, to get these fall colors and that's what you're seeing here in front of us. So the cherry orchards turn red, the apple and pear orchards turn yellow so the orchards you're seeing here are in various stages of uh, fall foliage and they look absolutely gorgeous. Um, at this point I wasn't quite sure where I was going to go and I eventually decided sometime along here that I was going to go up Squilchuck Canyon and I'll do that in a moment and uh, go up to Mission Ridge where there was some snow on the ground and there's also lots of great fall colors up there. So right now I'm over East Wenatchee, Washington and I'm heading for the Columbia River, which is glassy smooth on this beautiful autumn day. Uh, there was very, very little wind, and it just really was a great day to fly, except it was really cold out in the morning. This was shot at about 9 a.m., and when we start going up Squilchuck Canyon, you'll see that a lot of it is still in the shadows, uh, but you'll still be able to see lots of stuff. Um, just notice the reflections in the river. I just, I love flying over this river when you can see reflections. Um, there aren't many clouds in the sky this day, so you don't see any clouds reflected, um, but that's cool when you can see that. And in some of my other videos, um, like the video down to Crescent Bar, I think you can really see that really well. So if you're looking for that kind of a view, you can, uh, so you can see it. So anyway, I'm going up Squilchuck Canyon, which is one of the bigger canyons in Wenatchee. And this canyon uh, goes all the way up to Mission Ridge, which is the ski resort. And that's just coming into view now on the left, top left side of the picture there, right behind my logo. And by the way, this uh, camera angle, um, I'm gonna be, actually, I think I'm gonna be putting out this video in two formats. I had two cameras facing forward. I had the cockpit view camera, which is now mounted on a central post, so you can really see the instruments pretty well. Um, and that's the view that, that's going to be in one of the videos. And then in the other video, um, it's going to be the nose cam view, which is basically uh, the same view, but you're outside. You're not inside the helicopter. And um, I'm going to put them both out, and I'm going to put them both with the same narration. What the heck? Why should I narrate it twice? It's the same stuff. And um, I would love to get uh, reactions from folks. I'll probably put a poll in the community section to see which one you like better. I just pointed out Pitcher Canyon off to the right. That's one of the, another uh, major canyon off of Squilchuck. Uh, inside Squilchuck Canyon, there's a little creek. There's a road that goes all the way up. Um, and then there's a bunch of orchards. Um, in some places, the canyon's pretty narrow. In some places, it's wider and there's more orchards. And then off to the left in this picture would be Wenatchee Heights. That's the hill. Uh, it kind of ends in a like a flat top mesa. And there's a lot of cherry orchards up there. And there's a lot of people living up there. And then off to the right are some more orchards on the hillside. There's really not much to say about this. I, I have a lot of videos where I go up and down Squilchuck Canyon. A lot of my cherry drying clients are up there. Right now I'm pointing out my, um, my uh, vertical speed indicator. Um, that's the topmost instrument on the left. Um, and that's showing that I'm climbing at roughly right now 800 feet per minute. Um, that's a pretty good climb rate, but I'm very light on fuel. It's just me on board, so the helicopter can climb even better than that if I wanted to. Um, if you look at the second, uh, the third instrument off on the top there, or the one with the green 
uh, kind of trim around it. Um, that is my airspeed indicator, and it looks to me like I'm doing about 80, 80 knots in this climb. Um, you'll, I might have just pointed out my, my phone sitting there mounted next to my iPad, and that's showing the same view that, that is uh, from the cockpit mounted camera. Uh, and the reason I do that is I can't see that camera and I want to make sure that it's still running so I leave that view in my phone and every once in a while I glance at it. So right now we have passed the turnoff to go up to Wenatchee Heights. We're continuing up uh, Squilchuck. The road here changes its name somewhere around here to Mission Ridge Road because again it's going up to the ski resort and that is just to the right of my compass in this picture. What I wanted to do is I wanted to fly over some of these larch trees. Actually, I just made the motion there to show you where I want to fly. I want to go straight, then around to the right. Um, I think, not sure, but I think that these yellow trees among the uh, evergreens are larch trees. Um, that's the only uh, conifer that turns uh, yellow, in, uh, or turns color, I should say, and uh, the, the needles fall off. Um, someone told me they might be tamarisks, so I could be wrong. If anyone knows for sure, please leave it in the uh, comments for this this video. Um, they're beautiful though, and uh, you'll see a lot of this, uh, it's probably way past now, up in the North Cascades. If you ever ride on the North Cascades Highway, which I highly recommend in September, um, it is full of large trees turning yellow. It's actually a really gorgeous drive, and I regret I didn't have time to do it this year. Probably adjusting the heat just then, because as I climb it gets cooler. You can't see the outside air temperature gauge from this angle, um, but it was pretty cool that day. And I'm getting up now. If you look off to the slightly to the right, you'll see an area where there was a, a landslide, where a land slid away from the rocks years and years ago. And then, of course, the whole area off to the uh, left is part of the Malaga slide, which was pointed out to me by Nick Zentner in another one of the videos I did. Uh, there's a couple of videos I did about um, geology in the area, and I've got more coming. Uh, there's also an area that uh, way off to the left there that was uh, forested. They, they cut down the trees in there. The ponds that you see up here are all uh, man-made and they're all for irrigation. They're storing water for irrigation. And this is where I'm really getting into these beautiful, beautiful large trees. Or, or yellow, or tamarisk maybe, I don't know. And the snow, of course. This is, uh, I'm up by the snow line. We've gotten a little bit of snow since then. We've also had a couple of warm days since then. So the snow up there is probably about what it is uh, in this video, but I think most of the trees are past their prime now. Um, this was shot about, I think about two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, meaning uh, middle of um, October. If you're seeing this in June, it wasn't obviously two weeks ago. So there's another rock slide off to my right. That's a more recent one. And again, in the video that I did with uh, Nick Zentner, there's a really good view of that uh, head-on looking right at it. So I'm going up this ridge. Look at these trees, they're just gorgeous. One of the things I like about flying helicopters is that I can go pretty much anywhere I want to go. And if I'm out there in the middle of nowhere, a lot of times I can get down really low and, and see stuff. So over here, I don't know how high I am off the ground, probably a couple hundred feet, two, three hundred feet and I'm pointing out some antennas up ahead and off to the other side, which you can't see. Um, there's a road that comes up not far from my home and it goes all the way up to Mission Ridge. It's a really rough four-wheel drive road and I've actually taken it up to this uh, antenna up ahead with the building next to it. And I'm also pointing out right by the uh, center post, you can see behind it, um, if you're looking at the video with, um, with the cockpit view, otherwise dead ahead, is uh, Mount Rainier, and you'll see a little bit better when I make the turn if you're looking at the cockpit view video. And this is the very top of Mission Ridge. Off to the left would be towards Ellensburg, and off to the right is the actual ski, the ski slopes. And I just flew along the ridge for a little while, and Mount Rainier's gonna fade out of view. And you can see other mountains up here, I think Glacier Peak, um, Kashmir Mountain, and I'm just flying along the ridge. There's Mount Rainier again. I don't usually get to fly up here all that often. It's the top of the ski resort. You can see the top of the ski lifts. And I'm going to make my turn and come down. Um, 
the mountains up ahead of me, kind of in that turn, those are the um, enchantments out by Leavenworth. And you can see now downtown Wenatchee, the Columbia River going up, that's in the left side of the picture now. And I'm coming down over the ski resort. Sometimes in the late winter, when they've closed the ski resort, but there's still snow up there, there are people that will hike up the mountain and ski down. And I was kind of wondering if they did that early in the season too, but I didn't see anybody. I wasn't looking very hard though. And now I'm gonna go off to the side. And go over all these beautiful yellow trees. And I'm talking away, who knows what I'm saying? Who knows? It drives me nuts when these uh, video cameras uh, don't do what they're supposed to do because I can't get any of the back. I can't, it's not like I can redo the flight. It would cost too much to do it, so. I'm pointing out various lakes. There's some great hiking up here. Um, Marion and Clara lakes are up here and I think that I'm getting up on one of them. Yeah, that is uh, Clara Lake, I believe, off to the left. I did a loop here and you can see a creek coming out of it. There's a lot of ice up here too. It was really cold. Nice the way the light goes through the trees at this angle. So I basically made a, a turn up there, 360 degree turn and I'm going back pretty much the way I was going. I'm going to start coming down the mountain. I'll go past uh, Beehive Reservoir is off to the left, the left side of my uh, windscreen. And you see me looking at the camera because I've looked at my um, phone and I've noticed in my phone that the picture on the phone hasn't changed. So now I'm wondering, is the camera, did the camera die? And the camera obviously didn't die because um, one of these two videos is actually showing the camera view, but I'm like getting all ticked off because I don't know what's going on. Very frustrating. Ugh. So now I'm messing with the phone to try to get the picture back because I know the camera's running because I looked at it and I saw the light blinking and voila, it just came back. So right ahead of me now is a Beehive Reservoir. Looks like it's about half full. There's a road that goes up to this. It's pretty easy to go on. A lot of people fish in here. There's camping nearby. And then there's another little lake out here, and I can't remember if I saw it or not. Up oh, there it is, right there. It's just to the left side of the screen. And that one does not have a road going to it. So now I'm descending. If you look again at my vertical, air, uh, vertical speed indicator, top left instrument, you'll see I'm going down at about maybe 700 feet per minute. And I remember aiming right for that rock formation on the left because I wanted to take a good look at it. I hadn't seen that before. Again, I don't do a lot of flying up here. It almost looks like snow, but it's not. It's a rock. And there was a trail up there too, the hike too. And now I'm going to descend down into the Wenatchee area. I'm going to come down one of the canyons. I believe I come down number one canyon. Let's see what I'm doing here. A little pocket of yellow trees there to the right. Those are probably either aspens. I'm not sure if we have cottonwoods here growing along where the creek is. And then off to the left, you see some fields. Those are wheat fields. And I think that there was one that had just been cut recently and another one that was old and hadn't been planted in a while. We grow a lot of different crops in this area. We've got the fruit trees, of course, uh, cherries, apples, pears, apricots. And then we also have um, wheat up in the mountains. <clears throat> I 
down in Quincy, they've got some, uh, they've got all kinds of crops down in Quincy. Quincy's about 30 miles from Wenatchee. They've got all kinds of row crops. Uh, we also grow a lot of uh, grapes in the area, but not, I don't think I've grown any grapes on this particular trip. Now this is number one canyon. There's a number one canyon in Wenatchee and a number two canyon. Number two canyon has a road that'll take you all the way to Kashmir, provided you've got a high clearance vehicle. Um, this is number one, and this is a dam here to hold back some water going down the canyon. I'm not actually sure the history of this. It looks like it's been here for a long time. I know that there was mining in this area, and I believe that there was gold mining in this area. I don't know too much about it. I know you can hike up here. There's like a gravel road that goes up to that dam. And then down at the bottom is a big uh, horse facility where people board their horses, and there's a lot of uh, different trails around there. And I'm coming up on Saddle uh, Saddle Rock, which is uh, kind of a landmark mark, landmark rock in Wenatchee. And I did get close enough to see if anybody was hiking, and there were hikers there, probably shaking their fists at me. But it was a quick pass. And that would probably look a lot better in the um, nose cam view. And now I'm descending down over Wenatchee. This is probably about the furthest I got in this direction. I'm west now of the airport. The whole idea was just to take one last autumn flight while the fall colors were still beautiful, go up and see the mountain, go up and see uh, snow, and then head back to the airport. So that's all I did. A lot of color in town. A lot of people have trees planted in town. Wenatchee's a pretty big city. I call it a town because I'm from New York. and By New York standards, this is barely a town. Um, so anyway, it's, it's a city. Um, the whole metro area, I think, has got either 40 or 60,000 people. That would include uh, Wenatchee, East Wenatchee, Malaga, the, you know, the whole area. Um, I live in Malaga, which is uh, 10 miles from uh, the one bridge that you see there. There's, there's two bridges there. The further away bridge is, I call it the South End Bridge. Um, and that bridge is 10 miles from my house, driving miles. My house would be uh, straight ahead, basically just to the, uh, just to the right of the, the picture there on the on this side of the river. I'm going to cross the river now at the bridge. And what's nice about the Wenatchee area is it really does have everything a person needs. Um, you know, we've got plenty of shopping, we've got plenty of dining, we have car dealers, we've got movie theaters, we've got, you know, FedEx and UPS, and we even have, a, obviously, an airport that has airline service um, three times a day uh, to Seattle and back from Seattle. So three flights in, three flights out, and that goes to four flights in the summertime. And it's got lots of recreational opportunities. I mean, it's a really wonderful place to live. Um, it's got four, four seasons. Um, it's dry, it's not wet like Seattle. I equate the climate to Flagstaff, Arizona. I'm from Arizona. After New York, I went to Arizona, then I came here, and it's a lot like Flagstaff or Prescott, Arizona. So it gets cold in the winter, but it's not brutally cold like Minnesota or, you know, upper reaches of Canada. Um, and in the summer it gets hot, but again, it's not as hot as Arizona. It's actually really very pleasant. And I'm heading right towards the airport now. Get some last look at the orchards. And that one of the drawbacks of not having um, the cockpit audio is that you can't hear my radio calls. And on this particular flight, I didn't make very many radio calls. I obviously made one when I took off, and I'm probably about to make one now if I haven't already done it. So you get to miss miss that. Uh, but I would probably say something like, uh, Wenatchee area traffic, helicopter 7534 Delta is uh, half a mile to the west, west of the airport. Uh, inbound landing at the fire cache. And then I would listen, and if someone else said where they were, uh, then I would look out for them, and if they were close, I would do this radio conversation to make sure we didn't hit each other. And then normally what I do is when I get up to the airport, uh, I have to cross the runway to get to my destination, uh, so I would make a radio call. Um, I'd look both ways, and you're going to see me do that in a minute. 
and I would make my uh, radio call just reminding everyone I'm crossing the runway just in case someone didn't say anything. I can, I can still stop or turn hard, you know. So there's me looking, <laughs> crossing the runway. That thing over on the uh, left is a VOR. It's an old navigation equipment still in use. And you can see a plane taxiing almost dead center. He's going to be out of my way in a moment. And I'm going to land on this ramp here, which is where the fire helicopters park when there are fire helicopters here, and there aren't any anymore. The season's over, despite the fact that we did have a fire recently. And I'm going to uh, make a little turn, turn around, and land um, with my tail towards that hangar because that's where the helicopter is going. And you can see my Jeep there with the tow bar. One of these days I'll do a video showing how I use that tow bar. So I hope you enjoyed this flight. I'm sorry that I had to narrate the whole thing. I hope it wasn't boring for you. Um, if you have any questions, put them in the comments. Uh, read the description, read the comments for more information. I hope you'll subscribe. I hope you click the bell for notifications so you can see the videos as soon as they come out. Um, please check out my Etsy store. And also, um, if you really want to support me, um, consider becoming a channel member. And thanks a lot for watching this. I hope you enjoyed it. Take care. Bye.